Hello and welcome to another video. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make bass music in the style of Joy Orbison, inspired by his tracks 2M3 to You and Pinky Ring. The project file samples and presets are available for a small contribution in the description, although a splice subscription is required to download the vocal samples. If you learned something from this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're new to the channel. You could also suggest artists you'd like me to cover in future in the comments. Our BPM is 134 and we are in the key of G sharp minor. Let's start with the drums. Starting with the kick. Here I was inspired by the heavy big bottom kick from Pinky Ring. Next we have the rims. These are three rims in a drum rack and in a choke group. There's saturation on the channel. And this helps smooth the harsh transients of the rim shots. Next, we have the perks group. First, we have the metal perk. We can see that this perk has been pitched down by a semitone at points during the loop. If we look at Simpler, we can see it's actually two hits or transients. And I didn't quantize the second, creating some offbeat syncopation. There are several different Foley sounds in the project, and these create the type of organic feel found in the reference tracks. Next, we have the tap. And this perk loop. I've added reverb to the perk loop so it feels more like a live instrument being played in a space. Next, we have the high drums. Starting with the hats. As is often the case with UK garage influenced music, I have a triplet note closed hat before the open hat. So both hats are in a drum rack and a show group. The open hat was made by layering acoustic and electronic samples. With this mixture of acoustic and electronic being a technique I've used throughout the project. Next, we have the shakers. Again, these are in a drum rack and a choke group. Then we have the Foley Shaker. And the Foley Loop. This has reverb applied to. These Foley Loops help create an organic feel. I'll mute and unmute them in the mix so you can hear what they add. <laughs> And finally, we have the exhale. This two-step groove is applied to everything in the drums group. It's a minimal application of the groove because although I wanted a garage feel, the drums in Pinky Ring aren't very swung. On the drums group, we have a saturator, vinyl distortion, parallel compression, 
And finally, EQ. I noticed that the drums sound very dry in both 2M3 TU and Pinky Ring. So although there is reverb applied via Sende, there's not much. And I'm using the Empty Club preset for this project. Next, we have the basses. Starting with this square wob. In Serum, we have a square wave taken down by two octaves with its unison at seven. Oscillator B is another square wave with its level taken down and it's modulating oscillator A via the warp menu knob. The sub oscillator is a sine wave taken down by two octaves. The noise oscillator is activated and I'm using the bright white noise. There's a low pass filter with oscillator A and the noise rooted into it. It's cut off, it's being modulated by LFO1 and there's drive on the filter. In the effects, there's distortion. The distorted FM basses heard throughout 2M3TU and Pinky Ring seem to be an homage to both forward era dubstep and drum and bass labels like Metalheads. On the channel, there's an EQ3 and I've used this to add sub, although both the square wob and FM wobble are played an octave or so above the big bass, so they won't sound as powerful no matter how much sub I add. Finally, there's another EQ cutting below the lowest harmonic of the lowest bass note. Next, we have the big bass. I noticed that the sub of the bass in Pinky Ring seem very consistent, so I've used a bass splitting technique here. I'll link another video explaining this in more depth. In the case of this project, the bass is detuned, and because of this detuning and the phasing it causes, the sub frequencies were difficult to control. For the sub, we have a sine wave taken down by two octaves. I've used this plucky shaped amp envelope in combination with the busy MIDI pattern. On the chain, I've used a compressor for more consistency. Although to be fair, increases the volume as well, so it's kind of difficult to tell. And an EQ3, which is splitting the frequencies for the top. We have a triangle wave taken down by two octaves with its unison at seven. The noise oscillator is also activated. The filter is in the effects, and this was because I wanted to put the distortion before the filter. If I rearrange them, you can hear why. If I turn off the distortion, you can hear a good demonstration of how distortion can fundamentally alter a sound. The combination of a waveform with few harmonics, like a sine or triangle, noise and distortion is a drum and bass inspired technique. The filter has its cutoff modulated by LFO1 with drive and fat. The EQ is boosting highs. On the chain, we have a frequency splitting EQ. And on the channel, there's an EQ adding mid-range and removing some harshness. I noticed the use of an echo on the wobble in 2M3TU. So I've added echo via SMB. The echoes filter is in a higher part of the frequency spectrum, like Joyo's use of it. And my assumption here is that a more mid-range echo would mask the bass. Next, we have the FM wobble. This is inspired by the wobble herd in 2M3TU. Here we have a patch similar to the square wob, a square wave taken down by two octaves. The unison is at three this time. And again, we have oscillator B modulating oscillator A with the sub and noise being the same as the square wob. 
We have a different amp envelope filter setup and LFO settings. Since this is a wobble, the filter envelope is set to trigger. There's distortion in the effects. The channel has the same insert as the square wob. However, you might be able to hear the echo again. And I've applied it heavily here via SMB since the sound is very short and otherwise the echo was difficult to hear. On the group, we have saturation, EQ, parallel compression, bass monoing utility, chorus, and a sidechain compressor using the kick as a trigger. As with the drums, reverb is applied mildly via Sende. Next we have the effects group. Starting with the drones. First we have this creepy drone. This is made by using Serum's rising noise, which is running into a low pass filter with drive. In the effects, there's distortion and an EQ, removing lows. Then we have the drone sample. These drones add a dusty ambience to the loop and I'd recommend tuning them to the key of your tracks if possible. On the group, there's overdrive, EQ, vocoder, redux, vinyl distortion, drum bus, EQ, erosion, and a sidechain compressor using the kick as a trigger. Except for the side chaining, I used lots of similar effects processing on the perk hits, loops, and other sounds before bringing them into the project, often on a long chain like this. Then we have the pad stab. I noticed some jazzy organic sounding chords or pads in the reference tracks, so I wanted to add something like this. I've also used an echo with pitch wobble to make the stabs feel more retro. Finally, we have the reverse. On the FX group, there's drum bus, EQ, Chorus and Utility, monoing below 500 hertz. Reverb is applied via A. Finally, we have the vocals. A video will appear on the screen now showing my in-depth approach to sequencing vocals. I've ended up using two different samples and I've re-pitched them or pitched them around at various points, particularly during bar four, for example. So that one's at minus three. This one's at minus one. This one's at minus three as well. I boosted the highs on Vox 1, so it's more in line with Vox 2. And on the group, I've monoed the vocals and added saturation, another boosting EQ, which is also removing lows, and chorus. Again, reverb is applied via A. Not a lot since the reference tracks are very dry, as I mentioned. And that's the video. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.